I want to review Peril on Gorgon, the Outer Worlds DLC, but I've not yet reviewed the game itself, the Outer Worlds game, and I sort of feel like I should do that at the same time. But you might be wondering to yourself, well, why haven't you reviewed the Outer Worlds yet? And the simple answer is, when this game first came out, everybody wanted to talk about the game it wasn't, or the game they wanted it to be. And it was kind of difficult to focus on the game it actually was. And that's the problem with hype. If something doesn't live up to the hype, it will generate disappointment. If you get told that this is the Fallout game that Fallout fans have been demanding, and then you play it and think, this is not the Fallout game I was demanding. In fact, this doesn't feel like a Fallout game you're going to feel a little disappointment. If you were expecting Fallout New Vegas in space, because that's what the hype was telling you, you might find yourself scratching your head and saying, this doesn't feel anything like Fallout New Vegas. And I can already hear the counter argument. But it had dialogue. It had dialogue that was funny and interesting. And it was made by Obsidian. Of course it was New Vegas in space. Okay. But do you know what else had amusing dialogue and was made by Obsidian? South Park, the Stick of Truth. And I hate to break it to you, but that game was not New Vegas with farting. The thing is, it's not fair of me to judge a game by the hype and assumptions made by its fans. It really isn't. I should evaluate a game purely on its own merits. And the thing is, I actually did enjoy The Outer Worlds. It's a very solid RPG. It's got strengths, it's got weaknesses, but overall, it's an enjoyable experience that I would recommend to people who enjoy RPGs, especially if you like RPGs that are heavy on the dialogue. Because dialogue is its strongest point. It's what the game kind of relies on. There is a lot of dialogue. And I do mean a lot. It's not quite vampire levels of, you know, gossip simulator. But it is very, very focused on the conversations you're going to be having with NPCs. Those conversations are usually interesting, generally quite funny and um, they come from a range of characters that are, for the most part, really engaging. There's also tons of backstory that you can find on notes or in terminals by <laughs> rummaging through absolutely everybody's emails, and they really do help build up a picture of the system you're in. I really did enjoy going through, you know, masses of emails, masses of text to build up a picture of people I was probably never even going to meet because they died years before. The main story was solid and it did enough to keep things going, although there were some moments where I found myself questioning the protagonist's motivation. And I have to say, I didn't enjoy my uh, playthrough where I sided with the board half as much as the one where I sort of went against them. And this is basically because I found the interactions with the NPCs to be very unrewarding when I uh, went that path. Both the interactions with my own crew, but especially my interactions with the NPCs who belong to that faction. It really did feel like the writers just did not care for that faction at all and made them very, very one-dimensional, very uh, bland and very easy to categorize as the bad guys. They did a much better job in some of the other areas related to the main quest, um, some of the planets you would go to where you might you might actually look at some of the different factions on one planet, for example, say, Monarch, and say, no, those are the good guys and those are the bad guys. Or you might look at them and think, no, they're all about equal. But you got the sense that the people in those factions believed 
They believed in what they were doing and they would justify it. Sometimes you would feel like they were trying to justify it to themselves. They were in a bit of denial, but they seemed genuine. They felt like they really were, you know, arguing why they were doing the right thing. And that made it believable. Even if you looked at their faction and said, nope, I think you are wrong, you didn't get the feeling that they were just sort of cardboard cutouts. But overall, the story and the dialogue was very enjoyable, and it, taken as a whole, was a rewarding experience and is the game's major strength. The game mechanics around the dialogue were pretty good. Um, there were quite a lot of skill checks, so different characters would get different options and different ways of solving different problems. Although, once you get to know the game, it's reasonably easy to sort of min-max everything, take the right companions with you, use the right outfits to get the best results. But if that's what you want from the game anyway, then that's probably what you're looking for. But it is a dialogue system that will give you different approaches so that you feel like you've achieved possibly the same goal, but in a different way. Outside of the dialogue, the game mechanics are okay. They're solid. You know, the combat's nothing to write home about. It works. It is pretty basic. The character build system is very basic, but it does its job. The, um, the inventory and the, the equipment is passable. It's not the greatest system. I found it a little annoying in places. For example, you can't take helmets off your followers, your companions, for some reason. Once you put a helmet on them, you can replace the helmet, but you can never remove it. You can never take it off if you decide, nope, they don't look right without with a helmet on. Um, you can hide companion helmets by selecting an option in the settings, but it hides it for, for all of the um, followers. You can't turn it off for one follower because they don't look right with the helmet, but keep it on for another because they look amazing in that hat. I don't know why you can't take hats off. I really don't. I sort of understand why you can't take the armor off them, I guess. They didn't want to have some sort of silliness where you were sending everyone around butt naked. But, you know, all of the characters start without a hat on. You should be able to take the hat off. It makes no sense and it's one of those things that just constantly annoyed me. I'll be honest, I wasn't that inspired with the armor and the outfits anyway. The weapons were kind of cool. Some of them looked very cool but very often I was unimpressed with how they felt. You know, I remember finding the vermin and it's this giant revolver and I thought, yes, and then I shot it and it felt a bit kind of meh. It didn't have as much oomph. There are some weapons that do have oomph. There are some large melee weapons and they, they do feel very satisfying. But all of the loot's leveled as well, and I don't like leveled loot in an RPG. It, it felt very looter shooter. You know, you'd you'd find a pistol that was level one, and then you'd find the same pistol later on that was level um, thirty, and it would do you know seven times the damage. And it was I don't I don't I find the whole thing a little um I don't know. It, it just I don't think it fits RPGs as much as it fits looter shooters. So. And the final gripe I will uh, mention is I felt the world was a little flat and lifeless. And by world in this particular case, I mean the system, the various planets and places you visit. They didn't, they didn't make a believer of me. I would walk into a town and it would feel a bit lifeless. It would, it would feel flat and not very realistic. The, the people in the town behaved in a way that felt completely artificial. Most of them would just stand around in the same place, never move for the entire game. And you can get away with that with one or two NPCs, especially if they're like a trader behind a counter, that sort of thing. But it was just all of them, all of the time, and they just didn't have a life. 
you know, the, 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 the guy that was running Monarch and his assistant were always in the same place. Week in, week out, stood, doing, having the same conversation in the same room, in the same spot, wearing the same outfit. They never had any, there was nothing to suggest they did anything but hang around and wait for you to talk to them. And it, it just felt so artificial. I mean, it is a problem that every game has to deal with because, of course, that's why NPCs are there. But I, I think most games do a better job of hiding that from you and making it seem like the NPCs have a life and that the town has a purpose beyond just being there for you to visit and talk with people because that's how it felt to me. Everywhere I went felt like a stage filled with actors who were waiting to deliver their lines to me. And they were great lines. They were interesting lines and great performances. The voice actors nailed it. Um, but, you know, it felt a little artificial. So that was probably one of my major criticisms of this game. But none of these flaws would stop me from recommending this game. I'm telling you about them so that you, you know what to expect. But if you are the sort of person who does like RPGs and you love dialogue in your RPGs, this game is probably going to be one that you enjoy. Um, the, the companions, for the most part, are fun to talk to. They, they have their own quests and they're mostly very interesting and fun to engage with. Uh, most of the NPCs that you meet are interesting in some way. You might hate them, you might love them, you might find them hysterical or absolutely idiotic, but they generally get a reaction from you. And I liked that, I did. This is a game that I think is worth the full price. I do recommend it, but do understand what you're buying Try to get through the hype. Try to ignore it and focus on the fact that this is a fairly basic and solid RPG that just excels when it comes to dialogue. So, that's my review of The Outer Worlds, but what about Peril on Gorgon? Did I enjoy that? Yes, yes I did. Probably more than the base game. I actually liked this DLC a lot. And it's difficult to say why I liked it more than the base game, because it's fair to say it's kind of more of the same. It is more of the same. Now, it might be that my expectations were different going into this, but I also think there were certain things that they just did a little better. For example, there was a ton of, you know, backstory in the terminals again, but this time I really found myself getting into it. I don't know if the writing was better or just the core story was better for this, but I found myself really wanting to know what was going on and what had gone on in the past. The story itself was very predictable, um, but it's supposed to feel like you're in some sort of um, cheesy space drama serial. Um, and it does a reasonably good job of that. And if you embrace that, if you go in and just embrace that idea that, that you're almost playing a Flash Gordon type character in a serial drama, it really works well. The story in this DLC is actually quite dark, as are many of the subplots. Um, for all of its humour, it never really loses this slightly horrific, shocking feel. But what I did enjoy in, about this DLC was several of the NPCs involved in this horror felt believable. More believable than some of the, shall we say, bad guys in the base game. It was fairly obvious they were... They were bad, they were evil, they'd done some pretty horrific things, but there was something more to them that would either let you empathize, perhaps even want to forgive them, because maybe they were a little bit likable, or maybe they 
felt remorse and you could see them trying to deal with the horror of what they had done. And whilst you could argue that this didn't mean they should be forgiven, it did make you see their humanity more and made them more relatable. And that's it, really. I did enjoy this DLC slightly more than I enjoyed the base game. That might be because I went in with a slightly different set of expectations. It might be that I played a character that was more suited to the Outer world Because I knew the game better, I created a character that was a little more tongue-in-cheek himself, so he sort of suited the game more. But overall, I actually do think this DLC just hit the sweet spot a little better for me. However, it is just more of the same. If you liked The Outer Worlds, you will probably like Pedal on Gorgon. If you found The Outer Worlds boring or didn't enjoy it, you're probably not going to change your mind just because of this DLC. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my review of The Outer Worlds and its DLC, Peril on Gorgon. I hope that that was helpful and will uh, mean you're a little better informed as to whether or not you should buy the game or the DLC if you already own the game. Thank you for listening to me ramble on, and I will catch you guys next time.